Good morning, friends. I'm Bishop Laurie, and I am delighted to greet you in the name of the risen Christ. You have been worshiping in your own homes for a number of weeks now because of COVID-19 restrictions that do not allow us to worship together in our church buildings. Our clergy have been working diligently to learn new skills in live streaming, Facebook Live and YouTube, as well as hold meetings and small group studies through Zoom and Microsoft Teams. In addition, many of you are engaged in outreach and mission to your communities, especially as the unemployment rate and the need for food and material assistance in Iowa grows day by day. I want you to know that your pastor or pastors have been working tirelessly to plan worship, lead meetings, and provide pastoral care in new ways because of COVID-19. The Apostle Paul says in the sixth chapter of his letter to the Christians in Galatia, so let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. My brothers and sisters, the needs seem endless right now, and our leadership is weary. Their bodies need rest, and their spirits need revival. That's why I, along with our cabinet members, have asked all of our clergy, worship leaders, and staff to take three consecutive days away from the church sometime in the next month. Three days to rest, rejuvenate, have fun, read a good book, or play with their children and grandchildren. Remember, rest is built into the very fabric of our world as God rested on the seventh day after finishing the work of creation. This worship service has been planned by the cabinet of the Iowa Annual Conference so that you and your pastor can be inspired and encouraged. We are especially grateful that our beloved Bishop Deb Kesey is going to be preaching this morning. None of us knows what the future will look like here in Iowa or around the world after COVID-19, but I do know this, we will not remain the same. We have been changed forever, and we understand in a much deeper way what it means to be the body of Christ, one human family joined together in love and hope as we seek healing and wholeness for all. May God bless your worship experience today, and I invite you to join me in prayer. Good Lord, as we begin our worship today, Keep us under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain those who are anxious and fearful or who are now unemployed. Lift up all who have tested positive and are being treated in hospitals and comfort families who have lost loved ones. May we rejoice in your grace, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In this time of anxiety, give us strength to love our neighbor, walk with the fearful, and assure those who are isolated right now of our support and encouragement. We give ourselves wholly to you, Lord. May this time of worship fill our hearts with peace and inspire us to be your vessels of hope. Amen. Our theme today is focused on our Easter resurrection hope. As our call to worship, will you meditate with me on this verse from hymn number 368, My Hope is Built, as a prayer of hope and promise as we center ourselves for worship. His oath, his covenant, and his blood support us in the whelming flood. When all around our souls give way, he then is all our hope and stay. I'm Gail and this is Paul Wilcox and we'd like to invite you to sing with us hymn number 158 in the United Methodist Hymnal, Come Christians Join to Sing. And Paul's going to give us a little introduction.
am Carol Kress. I am the North Central District Superintendent, and I have the privilege today to share an opening prayer with you. So let us place ourselves into an attitude of prayer. Breathe in fresh the Holy Spirit. And let us pray. New every day is your love, great God of light. And all day long you are working for good in the world. Stir up within us the desire to serve you and to live each day at peace with our brothers and sisters in all creation and to devote each day to your love and to your service. As we gather today, we come from many places and our hearts are filled with many concerns and unanswered questions. And yet, O oh Lord, you are the one who holds these things in your hands. Place us in your hands this day. Give us an opportunity to rest there and to know that we are secure just for this moment but always we are blanketed with your love. Bless and keep us and open our heart to worship you as we are bound together with cords that cannot be broken. In the name of your son, amen. I am Moody, Colorado, District Superintendent of the South Central District. My son, John, and I invite all children to join us in today's children's time. John is uh, our pianist uh, uh, for today. John? Hi. <laughs> okay. This is a season of uh, spring and also the uh, Christian season of uh, uh, Easter. And uh, springtime brings uh, various calamities such as tornado and allergies and uh, uh, sickness. So today, uh, I will make suggestions on how we can uh, go uh, through this. Uh, first, uh, we will sing the song, uh, In the Name of Jesus. And uh, second, uh, I will teach you how to make a, a face uh, mask that is uh, very, very easy for, for children to, uh, uh, to do at home and, and, and to try. No sewing. And then three, we are going to recite the gospel in a nutshell. So whenever there is a, a, a siren of a tornado, we, we go down to the basement and that should be the time to, to sing the song in the name of Jesus so you will not feel afraid when there is a, a calamity. So, so let's sing this song and I will lead you. That's the first step. The second step is uh, to learn how to make a mask uh, uh, for children even if you don't know how to sew. I don't know how, how to sew but I need to, to make my own uh, face mask and, and I don't like to, to buy so that I don't compete uh, with, with others uh, who need uh, the good uh, mask. What I do, I use a handkerchief and, and this is my, my handkerchief and then I, I use a, a rubber band. I, I get the, uh, this uh, rubber band uh, from vegetables. Whenever I buy vegetables, <laughs> I save the rubber band, which is uh, uh, keeping the vegetables together. So I have uh, a handkerchief, and then uh, uh, I have a, a rubber band. Uh, the handkerchief is, is folded like that and folded twice uh, like that. And I, I get the uh, uh, handkerchief hanging on the uh, on the rubber band uh, like that, and then I stretch the the rubber band, and then I, uh, I place it uh, uh, on my face like this.
There you go. Yeah. There. So you can uh, you can uh, make this even if you don't know how to to saw. And when the handkerchief is used, you can throw this uh, in, in the laundry. Uh, you can replace it anytime. So uh, I bring a, a fresh uh, extra uh, handkerchief so I can uh, uh, change uh, anytime. So that's step two. We don't compete with others uh, who need the good kind of uh, mask uh, when we are able to do that. Uh, and the uh, uh, step number three is to learn the gospel in a nutshell. I have here uh, a peanut shells. Uh, I have several pe peanut shells. And, and I put the gospel inside this. And, and I can throw this uh, 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 to, to anyone uh, of you. And then, and, and then you're going to open it. And you're going to find the, the gospel in a, in a nutshell there uh, with the prayer. And, and that will uh, give you uh, uh, inner strength and, and hope. Uh, uh, in God, uh, faith in God. So we open this uh, peanut and we're going to find the, the, the gospel uh, in there. Uh, it says a little scroll and, and, and so uh, the, there you go and, and you open it and uh, you can uh, read this. You ask uh, uh, your mother uh, to print uh, this. They know how to print this and, and give you a, a, a copy uh, uh, of this from John 3.16. The, the, the gospel in a nutshell is John 3.16. It says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. And that's the promise of Jesus. So we have to pray. And uh, the prayer that Jesus taught the disciples to, to pray daily is, is like this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You recite that every day and uh, you will uh, feel uh, uh, close uh, to God and uh, you will not be afraid uh, in this uh, uh, season and just keep singing that the song in the name uh, of Jesus. As we say goodbye, we will sing it one more time as, uh, uh, as, as we go. And John will play. on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I now send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. It's an appropriate scripture for this morning. Um, it's been a very strange couple of weeks. Strange, unprecedented, surreal, frightening, uncertain. Whatever word you use to describe it, these past several months are unlike any I have ever experienced. And I guess it's true for you as well. This has been a time filled with incredible loss. We've lost the ability to, to work normally or even work at all or to spend time with friends and family or to go to school or go to the store just to buy groceries. We've lost the ability to, to celebrate graduations or prom or birthdays. We can't attend athletic events. We can't even watch them on television. Weddings, funerals, anniversaries have been disrupted or postponed. For many, it has meant serious worries about finances paying the mortgage, buying food, 
caring for children at home. Even church, that place where we find balance in life and fellowship and hope, even that has been taken away from us by the COVID-19 virus. And what I think is even more unsettling is that we have no idea how long this quarantine is gonna last or what our new normal will look like when this crisis is finally over. It's a time of deep loss, great uncertainty. And we are all doing the best we can to cope. For me personally, our family has been unable to celebrate my dad's 98th and my mom's 96th birthdays. And just last week, the day after her birthday, mom went to the hospital, but no one could be with her, not even her husband of 76 years. Strange and unsettling times we live in. It was also a very different experience because I felt as though I almost completely missed this season of Lent. And for me, the season of Lent is, is one of the holiest times of the entire Christian year. I felt that loss keenly. As you know, Lent begins with ashes and the call to repentance and the invitation to walk with Jesus through his final acts of ministry. It's during Lent that we read of the cleansing of the temple, the lament over Jerusalem, the parable of the talents, the sharing of the greatest commandment, the triumphal entry, the Garden of Gethsemane, the abandonment and betrayal by his friends, the crucifixion, and finally ending in his death. That journey through Lent is what helps prepare me for the joy and the celebration of Easter Sunday, the most glorious Sunday of the entire year. But even the fullness of that experience was taken away from us all this year. Now, yes, I was privileged to participate in wonderful online worship. And it was beautiful and moving and inspirational as we sang along with the hymns and responded to the liturgy as we sat in our living room. But I still struggled with feeling distanced from it all. Because I love Easter Sunday. <laughs> I love it. I love the people. I love the alleluias and the lilies and the children and the music and the full to capacity pews. I love Easter Sunday. But the truth is, as much as I love it, I need Easter on Monday. You see, Easter isn't just about the high we get on that Sunday. It's really about what happens afterwards on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and the rest of the year. Because Monday is when we have to get back to this real world, back to paying bills, back to heartaches and frustrations, back to worries and uncertainties, back to quarantine and social distancing and masks, back to a very real and very uncertain life. The message of Easter is for those times, the times we need it most, like today. We need Easter on Monday, as did those first disciples. Just think about it. Those first followers had seen something they could never forget. They had seen the lonely crucifixion of their beloved friend, the man they hoped would change the world. And to compound that misery, not only had they left him to be tortured and crucified all by himself, but they had denied ever even knowing him. Now imagine having to live with that memory, that guilt. Since last Easter, I'm sure we've all confessed to hundreds of misdeeds and misthoughts and mistakes, but imagine if you had done what the disciples had done. Because the truth was, they had saved their own hides at Jesus' expense. No matter how they tried, I'm sure that image of those three crosses was indelibly imprinted in their minds and souls. How do you get past that memory? So that was Friday, the day he died. Then came Saturday. Saturday must have been one of those strange days that feels a little bit like you're out of kilter with the rest of the world. My guess is there had been little, if any, sleep the night before, and so Saturday was a long, dazed day after a sleepless night. We've experienced days such as that, when we've stayed up all night with a sick child, 
or when we sat at the bedside of someone who was critically ill or dying. And the next day is just one of those days when you walk around in a fog doing almost automatically the things that you have to do. I think there's Saturday must have been like that. And remember also, Saturday was the day they went to church. It was their Sabbath. In Luke, we read, on the Sabbath they rested according to the commandments. That was their habit for that holy day, and I would expect they followed that commandment to spend the day in meditation and prayer and worship. But this Sabbath was different. This was a sad, broken, unreal kind of day. So, Friday he died. Saturday they went to church. And the next day, the first day of the week, which would be like our Monday, at sunrise, Mary went to the tomb, and that was the day all heaven broke loose. We read, Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. It's a great announcement, but it wasn't enough for the disciples, for as we read on, when it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples met were locked for fear of the Jews. Did you get that? Even after Mary's amazing announcement, they were still hiding behind those locked doors. They were still afraid. They were still uncertain. We go on. The doors of the house where the disciples met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them, and he said, Peace be with you. After this, he said, he showed them his hands and his side, and the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And he said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I now send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Receive the Holy Spirit. Friends, Easter isn't just about what happens on Sunday. It's about what happens on Easter Monday. It's about those times we most desperately need to hear the message, the good news of Easter. Where you see, it was the first day of the week. It was Easter Monday that Christ came to the disciples in the midst of their fear, in the midst of their anxiety, in the midst of their uncertainty. He came, offered peace, gave them courage to live into their faith and into whatever uncertain future was in front of them. And because of that encounter, their lives would never, ever be the same. Bishop Sharon Zimmerman Rader is a beautiful, delightful woman, full of life and vibrancy. She has also had to deal with breast cancer. And I remember several years ago, she wrote an article for the Interpreter magazine. It was an article about Easter, and I want to share her words with you. She said, Easter is the time for heralding the sometimes unanticipated gifts from God. I was only seven or eight when my great uncle Bill died. My parents took me to the funeral with them, carefully preparing me for what would take place. I realized the somberness and sadness of the event, and I worried about my parents' and grandparents' grief at the service. But then we went to Aunt Mary's house, and everyone ate, and everyone told stories, and everyone laughed, and some of the sadness went away. It was not what I expected, she goes on to say. My fear of this disease that has invaded my body, or maybe we could say the fear of this virus that has invaded our world, leaves me anxious, wondering about the future, preparing for the worst. A new grandchild, our first, is born, and within two or three months, he's smiling. He smiles in response to his parents' love. He smiles when I look at him and say, Ethan, and his smile takes away my anxieties helps me look to the future with anticipation and gives me hope. It was not what I expected. Easter is God's invitation to laugh at our expectations that are too small. It puts God back in charge in the center of life. Did you hear that? Easter puts God back in charge in the center of life. Peace be with you. 
receive the Holy Spirit. Friends, Christ's invitation is for us as well. Christ comes to us and he says to us, peace. And he offers us the transforming power of this Holy Spirit. And instead of fear, we can begin to love, live our lives in the power of his promise. Peace. Receive my Holy Spirit. I believe Jesus comes to us the same way he came to his followers 2,000 years ago. He came to Mary the day after the Sabbath as the gardener. He came to Thomas and the Twelve on the evening of that same day as they were hiding in fear. He cooked breakfast for Peter, who thought he was just another fisherman. He came to those on the road to Emmaus as just another traveler. Jesus comes as he always does, in unexpectedly simple and normal ways. So Easter is our reminder that God is still in control no matter how out of control our lives feel right now. It is a reminder that the risen Christ we celebrated and worshiped on Easter morning will go with us to wherever we are on Monday. Because I also believe that as sacred as the time is on a glorious Easter Sunday, the truly sacred moments are found more often than not in these everyday moments of real life. The moments which, if we don't look with more than our eyes and hear with more than our ears, we will miss altogether. Moments that happen on Easter Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. We can recognize him in the faces we meet on the street. We can see him in the eyes of the people who come to our food pantries. We can see him in the moments shared with our children or grandchildren, even if by FaceTime. We can see him in the fellowship of the church, scattered though we are, in every facet of everyday, ordinary, Monday life, Jesus will come. This morning, I want to close with the words of a book that has been helpful for me in my faith walk. It's by Albert Schweitzer. It's his classic book, The Quest of the Historical Jesus. I want you to hear his words and let them prepare you for the Easter that comes tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Here are the words of the great Albert Schweitzer. Jesus comes to us as one unknown, without a name. As of old, by the lakeside, he came to those who knew him not. He speaks to us the same words, follow me, and sets us to the task which he has to fulfill for our time. He commands, and to those who obey, whether they be wise or simple, he will reveal himself in the toils, conflicts, and sufferings which they must pass through in this fellowship, and in an ineffable mystery they shall learn in their own experience who he is. Friends, it's Easter Monday. Receive the Holy Spirit and find peace. Amen and amen. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, I'm glad you are here in the presence of God. What is it that you brought to God? What are the needs of your family? What are the needs of your community? Let us pray. Gracious, loving, and merciful God, we have come from different places, physically, emotionally, and spiritually, into your house to receive grace, peace, and mercy. For we believe that in your house, there is a sense of acceptance. In your house, there is a sense of forgiveness. In your house, there is a sense of guidance. You know how to guide your people. You know how to embrace your people. You know how to listen to our prayers when we lift them up to you. Oh, gracious God, hear us when we pray for those who are suffering, those who are going through difficult times, those who have lost 
their loved ones to COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for our communities. We pray for the doctors who are fighting very hard to help your people. We pray for our nurses, asking you to make of their hands healing hands. We pray for all people who are trying to help those who are suffering. Grant them the courage to continue to do what they are doing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers when we pray for the leaders of this country. From President Trump to all our governors and mayors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers when we pray for president around the world, when we pray for kings, emperors, when we pray for all leaders around the globe, asking you to grant them a great vision for healing for their people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we want to pray for all our pastors, wherever they are. Grant them the ability to lead your people during this difficult time. We lift up district superintendents. We pray for all our bishops within the United Methodist Churches, as well as all denominations. Grant them the wisdom to lead your people. As your people who have been forgiven, as your people who have been received in the house of the Lord, as your people who have been blessed by God, enable us, O oh God, to pray the Lord's prayer as you taught your disciples over 2,000 years ago. And we are going to say this prayer together. You don't mind me because I am going to offer my prayer in French. Notre Père qui es aux cieux, que ton nom soit sanctifié, que ton règne vienne, que ta volonté soit faite sur la terre comme au ciel. Donne-nous aujourd'hui notre pain quotidien. Pardonne-nous nos offenses, comme nous pardonnons ceux qui nous ont offensés. Et ne nous soumets pas à la tentation, mais délivre-nous du mal, car c'est à toi qu'appartiennent le règne, la puissance et la gloire au siècle de siècles. And all God's people say, Amen. Hi, I'm Ron Carlson, Northwest District Superintendent, and I have never been more proud in my life than to be an Iowa UMC person. As I watch the pastors and lay leaders across the state reaching out and being the church to God's people, we see people using Facebook, YouTube, websites, phone calls, letters, and notes. It's amazing the way that they continue to reach out. Now, I know at this time, many of our people are not in a very good place. Some of you have been affected negatively by the farm economy, floods, job losses, and sickness. Please know that you are in our prayers. I want to encourage those of you that have been continue to be blessed by God in this time, though, and I ask that you do your part to support your local churches with your usual offering and gifts. Uh, know that this would be a perfect time for you to give even more and give a special gift in this time of need. Please remember that together we can do more than any one of us could do by ourselves. You can give your gift by electronic transfer, you can mail it to the church, or you can drop it off. They will gladly receive it in many different ways. I'd like you now to pray with me. Gracious God, we thank you for all that you do. We ask that you be with those who are suffering and those who are sick. We ask that you be with our first responders and caregivers. We thank you for those gifts that you continue to give to us and the many ways in which you bless us. 
as we receive them, help us to use them in ways that will grow your kingdom and grow your people. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi, this is Doug Q, Superintendent of the Southeast District. This is my wife, Miss Jody, and we have the offertory today for today's worship. It's 10,000 Reasons. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, it's time to sing. Great God of love, source of light and hope, as our time together in worship is drawing to an end, we seek to carry you with us wherever we go. We seek to unite our hearts in love with you, with one another, and all of creation, giving thanks for all that you have made, the beauty all around us. We hold in our hearts and prayers our pastors, seeking for them a time of rest, renewal, and recreation. We hold our congregations, seeking to find hope and joy and purpose in this time of isolation. We pray for our communities and for our world that your light would shine from the smallest to the greatest. Give to us direction. Well up within us a source of life and hope and joy and beauty. Holy One, we seek your grace for our world, healing in the midst of this pandemic. We seek a new beginning, a new joy, a new life. We seek to celebrate the resurrection life of Jesus in our congregations 
and in our communities. And our lives are living, are loving. That all that we are and have may become an offering to you, to your unfailing glory and presence in this world and in the world to come. A sign for all to follow. Amen. Friends far and near, thank you for joining us in our online worship service today. We are so grateful for each of you and for your creative ministry in the midst of this unprecedented challenge. The pandemic will eventually come and fade away, but we are already on the verge of significant changes. We will be changed. If we are living into those changes, that will bring forth a renewed life and the resurrected hope for the whole world. Remember, we are the resurrection people. So let us shine the light of hope open wherever you are, your family, your church, your community, and the world. And let us be truly the church of hope. So may the grace of Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen. Hi, I'm Harlan Gillespie, assistant to the bishop. And this is my wife, Deb. To close this service, we are going to offer this song, How Can I Keep From Singing? A song of Easter hope in the midst of difficult times. worshiping with us this morning uh, here in the Iowa Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church. We are seeking to do uh, our part alongside of you to be 
hope made real for the world as people of faith, fruit, and fire. And for any of you who are checking in today that are not connected to a local faith community, I invite you to check out your, your local United Methodist Church. The beauty of our denomination is that, that we are eclectic together in our, our, uh, our identity and how we, how we know one another. So I know that there is a home waiting for you. And for any of you that, that um, uh, maybe are feeling a, a desire to reconnect with God or with community uh, during this season of the pandemic, I would invite for you to to reach out to a United Methodist pastor in your in your area, or even right now to to recommit yourself to Christ, even as we commit ourselves to being hope made real for this world. Thank you so much for for joining us for worship. We hope that you continue to be blessed to be a blessing in this world. Thank you.